and welcome to Insert Title Here, the only podcast that can tell you the difference between Big Bird and Ted Cruz. One's a gigantic yellow chicken, the other one's the governor of Texas. Joining me today are Sato Hara. Wait, uh, otherwise known as Alexander Mogus, and uh, according to a Fourth Circuit federal court decision, I am legally unable to speak of Theodore Edward Cruz, otherwise known as Ted Cruz on any sort of internet broadcast or social media, unless it is to tell you that I'm not allowed to talk about him. So moving on to Devin. Oh, no, I, I for a second there, I forgot, yeah, Ted Cruz is the senator of Texas, but I was like, no, he's not. He's the, he's the, the guy who ran off to Cuba. Wait, Cancun? Shit, uh, you're right. He's a senator, not the governor. I ruined my fucking joke. Yeah. Fuck! <laughs> no, 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 you said senator, what? right? I say governor. Ah, yeah, no. it's all right. It's all right. We'll be roll the with governor everyone. soon. Just you wait. <laughs> the governor. Once the once the governor of Texas uh, happens to make an unfortunate meeting with some stairs, you know. I, I was about to say fall down the stairs, but I was worried it would come up as the wrong thing. But you know what? We're gonna leave that joke right there where we found it. We're gonna put it down. We're gonna step away. And we're gonna we're gonna look at that joke and go have a nice day as we walk all yeah. the way around it. Mogus so, Industries does uh, not condone the joke. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, dear. So, so how's your week been? Uh terrible because uh I have lost all sense of time since uh the con has ended. Um oh. yeah, it's just really weird. I didn't realize today was Monday. I, I didn't even realize we were supposed to record today. So I was like, man, what am I gonna do today? I, I cleaned up the living room uh and I sorted all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards and I was just like, Well, I don't know what else to do today. And then it's like, you have to record. I'm like, I have to what? Oh, shit. That's right. I have a podcast to record for. I I, I blanked. I totally didn't even realize I was supposed to do that today. That hashtag neat life. Am I right? Right. God. Once I go back to working, I'm going to feel better. I'm going to hate it, but I'm going to feel better. Um, it, do, it does get structured to your week once you've got a set schedule going. Yeah. But uh, back to what I was doing, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, though. So I was sorting through my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. I have a lot of rare shit, I realized. But... I found an old ass fucking card that said magic on it. And if if you, anyone listening doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, the cards are actually uh, called spell cards. They've been called spell cards for decades now, but when they first came out, they're called magic cards. So it's really weird seeing a green card that says magic on it, <laughs> and it, it just is this far out. Are they green or like teal? I thought they were like bluey teal. Like a greenish bluish color. It's Whatever, it's green. It's distinguishable. Blue eyes, white from... dragon. I have a bunch of those. I have a Japanese one. I've got a gold one. Well, I had a gold one. I traded it for money. I have an. I have. I have the original one, the SDK one. Uh, yeah, I have that. I have every style of blue eyes, white dragon. I, I have a lot of them. SDY dark blue, dark magician. I have the 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 collection one, which is like apparently worth hundreds of fucking dollars now. When the hell did that happen? Uh, recently. <laughs> Yeah, apparently. What the? I thought it was just video games that was screwed, but I was no. Xander was talking about this on Twitter with sneakers. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad that market was, and I started researching some old sneakers. And I'm like, what the? It's every collector's market so, right now. I'm gonna Everything. say this: card games have are not always been like this, but been pretty bad for a long time. Uh, like there's a, and it depends on how good the card is in the meta at it's in. Yeah. And well, that makes also sense, doesn't the, it? Drives and demand also up. the rarity of the card. Like there's a card I have that's like a hundred dollar card and it lets you draw two cards from your deck. Like that's, and it's a hundred bucks. I mean, there's, was it, pot, was it pot of greed? It's a, it's a retrain of pot of greed. I think it's pot of prosperity, I think. Uh, hey, but, Xander, what does pot of greed do? So the Blue Eyes White Dragon that's always been expensive is the Dark Duel Stories Blue Eyes White Dragon, and I used to have one yeah. of those, but I no longer have one of those. That's unfortunate. I'm it sorry, burned man. in the fire. That's very unfortunate. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, hey, bro. Hey, Devin, what's the effect yeah. of Blue Eyes White Dragon? Blue Eyes White Dragon does not have an effect, but there are also several Blue Eyes White Dragon cards that do have effects. There are retrains of Blue Eyes White Dragon in itself. Neat. Thanks. For example, Thanks, there's Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon. Uh, Blue Eyes Alternative Dragon is you reveal Blue Eyes in your hand, you can special summon it, and then you can destroy one card in the field, but it can't attack the turn that you do that. But hang on, did you just say there's a Blue Eyes Alt Rat Dragon in this that you hear, Japanese video no. card game? No, no, it's alternative. It's an alternative dragon. There's a Blue Eyes like, Alt like, Rat Dragon in this no. video card no, no, game? No, 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 no. Alternative like Linkin Park, like alternative music. Yeah. Like Papa Roach, <laughs> because days come and go, because my feelings are for you are forever, kind of alternative. 
No. Yeah, well, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Like, like fucking, like, do you feel like a man when you push her around? Do you feel better now when she falls to the ground type of alternative? That's not how you sing that song. You gotta sing that song properly. Oh, you mean like, do you feel like a man <laughs> when you push her around? Do you feel better now when she falls <laughs> like Yeah, that. like that. Just like yeah, that. like that. Yeah. So why is there an old white dragon in this Japanese because game? Blue eyes alternative I mean, white dragon. I mean, to be fair with you, it's blue eyes white. Like, I mean, it's 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 a sick hile away from getting banned from Belgium. I mean, have okay. You seen so fun of? fun actual story about Yu-Gi-Oh. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh episode, by the way, everybody. Every, this, this entire episode is about Yu-Gi-Oh. So, I've waited I don't so know much long about this day. So I got back into playing the card game a couple of years ago when me and my coworkers, uh, I'm going to name some of them because they no longer work at the company now and I can do that. Ha <laughs> ha. But fucking me and uh, my favorite coworker, Micah, we're fucking, uh, we got back into Yu-Gi-Oh at the same time. It's the same time the Danger Animals came out. Uh, oh yeah, I love those. And uh, I made a Blue Eyes Evoker deck and my friend Josh, uh, the guy who was on my podcast uh, yesterday, or not podcast, my stream Your the stream? other day. Yeah. Fucking, uh, he would be like, "What's the name of those? What's the name of those dragons you got?" I'd be like, "Blue eyes white dragon." He'd be like, "Blue eyes what dragon?" I was like, "Blue eyes white dragon." He's like, "Blue eyes white dragon." That kind of sounds a little dangerous for a Jewish kid to be using. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> and, and, and then so the first time I'm dueling Mike, I go, "All right, so I reveal blue eyes white dragon to you in order to special summon blue eyes alternative dragon." And he goes, "Alternative what dragon?" I was like. <laughs> Blue eyes alternative white dragon. He goes, blue eyes alternative what dragon? You got a blue eyes white dragon and you got an alt right dragon in that deck. What kind of deck are you running, motherfucker? Uh, and he would not. He was joking, of course, but fucking like he That's every funny. single time we play that game, he'd be like, man, I'm rooting for Micah's deck because I just don't trust yours. Uh, speak, ah! uh, uh, in case anyone listening doesn't know what uh, Invoked means, uh, there's an engine in, in Yu-Gi-Oh uh, based around the card called Alistair the Invoker, um, and it lets you fusion summon cards using cards in your opponent's graveyard and banishing those cards from the graveyard. So not only does it remove stuff from your opponent that they could possibly use in the graveyard, but also gives you buffs and puts stuff on your field. So yeah, I mainly use very it to good. summon like a uh, invoke Macaba or whatever to fucking like get a lot of stoppage and negations and just like oh you try to summon fuck you. Yeah, uh, I actually my friend uh, uh, CJ uh, who runs the YouTube channel uh, YouTube.com forward slash Darkrust Souls check him out. Uh, he and I had a couple of duels uh, over at Anime Weekend Atlanta, which was a lot of fun. Finally playing the game with actual people and not digital card game bullshit and special abilities is, is a lot more fun. Um, but he used a like invoked Shadal deck, which was like interesting. It was really fun to go up against and damn, I just love playing this game. I love playing this card game as much as I swear. And I hate playing it online. I love playing Yu-Gi-Oh. It's like, I've been playing it since like I was like 10 and I have not stopped. That sounds like an abusive relationship, bro. It's like, I love it, Talking but about I hate abusive it. relationship, bro. Talking about abusive relationship with Yu-Gi-Oh. Here's a true fact fucking story about Yu-Gi-Oh that Devin did once when me and him were dueling in the alternative dark dimension that we don't speak of any more than that. Fucking, we were dueling, and fucking, he did this thing where he fucking summoned this goddamn fucking card, and I forgot what it was, but th some effect I did didn't, like, target, it just did the whole thing, and he's like, what? And then we, like, we looked at the thing, I was like, yeah, it just, it just works, because it doesn't target, it's specifically, like, and he's like, fuck, and he just flipped the fucking, he literally flipped the table, and the, <laughs> I just unplugged my microphone, or my headset, so I can't hear you guys, but fucking, not only did he actually flip the table, but he didn't put his hands under the table. I specific I saw him specifically move his hands backwards enough to where he could make the upwards motion to pantomime flipping the table. But we were on a hardwood floor, so as he the momentum of him moving his arms up to pantomime flipping the table scooted him forward enough to where he then fucking slammed full force into the table. Flipped the fucking table, and I like got my feet up off the ground, and it barely missed me, and I just started busting out laughing. He's like, "Fuck! I didn't mean to flip the fucking table! God damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> that is the most Devon story I've heard. What card? What card did did? Not Obelisk the Tormentor it? in Dark Hole. Right. Yeah. Because since yeah, Obelisk couldn't be destroyed by card effect, but he can't be targeted by card effect or whatever. But Dark Hole doesn't target, so yeah. that destroyed him. Which. 
I learned that and it pissed me off. That's the, uh, man, that's the, okay. The problem with the anime is that it teaches you so much stuff incorrectly that you think certain cards work a certain way and certain interactions work a certain way when they don't. So, like, for the longest time, I thought Obelisk couldn't be destroyed by card effects, but nope, he could be destroyed by non-targeting shit, which is the best kind of shit, actually. Non-targeting removal, best removal, don't at me. Um, God, those decks I played back then were so fuck-awful, though. I just, ugh. Uh, I still have, I, I, I still have, like, remnants of those old decks that I've remade and fixed, but Jesus, they were bad. Then there's, like, me who hasn't played the game since, like, 2008, and I think, I collect some of the stuff, like, I've gone out of the way and I've brought a few of the cards I like, like, I've managed to amass a collection of different Blue Eyes artworks, I have the LOB Blue Eyes, I have the SDK Blue Eyes, I have a couple of random, uh, just random, blue I like the Blue Eyes cards. Do you have like the company Blue Eyes? Uh, no, but I do have the one that's sponsored by the Jessica Rabbit Fleshlight uh, edition, Blue Eyes. It's called the Blissey. Yeah. The Blissey okay. Dragon. I, I was I was sitting there thinking, like, what was meta back in two th- two, 2008? Yeah, it was meta in 2008. No, what was meta in 2008 was fucking Dark Arm Dragon. Dark Arm Dragon, Samurai, Magnet Warriors, Ill Blood. Those are the kind of the decks you'd always see. Um, he's done some monic stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, but I ran an ill blood, ill blood deck just sheerly to fucking troll because I kind of had it up to fucking my eyeballs with the dark arm dragon and the DD banishing shit. And mm-hmm. the, the zombies are the best way to counter that shit because look, all it takes is a few shenanigans with some Gemini summoning and a few shenanigans with a few things going in and out of each other's graveyards. And all of a sudden, there's three ill blood staring you down on the field in the same turn, and you're like, Ow! Shit! Now what? <laughs> <laughs> and you're going, how am, I gonna, how am I gonna deal with this shit getting out of play? And you're like, you're realizing it's not gonna happen, and he can punch it. Fuck. All right, all right. That's why I ran it. The real, the real yeah. pain in the ass back in that time, though, was honestly was seven samurai was a pain in the ass. Six samurai. Uh, I think it was, it was six samurai. Six samurai. Sorry, seven samurai is the movie. Uh, just because it was on the first like uh, looping where you could special summon repeatedly in the yeah. same turn, uh, kind you, of uh, like, archetypes. Okay, so like six samurai were a lot of fun back in the day because you could just summon a whole bunch of shit, get off a whole bunch of effects with them, and that's what made yeah. them a lot of fun was just the, the summoning speed. But now like. Almost every deck now has that kind of summoning speed, like, and that's what they had put in cards like Nibiru, which if you don't know what Nibiru is, it's a giant rock that literally obliterates your field if you do more than five summons in a single turn. Um, yeah. It was really yeah, funny, because now, the, now the thing that people do in Yu-Gi-Oh! is like, is that your fifth summon? Yeah. Giant meteor on the field. Boom. Like, ah, oh, well, that's unfortunate. The thing my wife likes to do is she'll do giant meteor on the field. I'm like, well, thanks for this giant rock with a shitload of attack points. What are you going to do now? And then she'll mirror, she'll do super polymerization, take it for fusion material. I'm like, you know what? Fuck you. <laughs> the other strategy I remember from back in the day as well was because it was around the time when beatdown decks were still very inviolable. So you get people who would just stack their deck with three copies of polymerization and a bunch of like really wimpy, shitty dragon monsters. And just literally stall. They do things like giant germ bubonic vermin over and over again. And just stall till they got five dragons in their hand and would just throw out like five headed dragon. Was was Dragon's Mirror out in two thousand eight? Because I feel like that would have been remember. the card you wanted to use. I honestly it's 2008 I don't GX. remember that time. Uh, uh, yeah, around that time. Yeah, right before right before five D started. Yes, yeah, so and Dragon Mirrors was definitely out because I was running a three headed dragon uh, deck at the end of GX that relied on Dragon's Mirror as its uh, special summoning engine. That 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 makes sense. That makes sense. But, Dragon's but, Mirror is still a that? really good card if you're running anything that re- was a Dragon Fusion. I still have my decks on me, but uh, is anyone surprised that this guy was running a fucking zombie deck? By the way, is Not anyone really. surprised at all? Not, Not really. No. It's, 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 it's anything which is as meta as fuck. It's. I was. Yeah. I'll be honest. I was running nothing but fucking uh, Dark Magician uh, all the way up until the Zexel era because that's when um, Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon came out. Mm. And I started playing Galaxy Eyes exclusively, uh, and I still do to this day. So I'm, I still play Dark Magician and Galaxy Eyes in tandem, um, and they're a lot of fun to play. Like not in the same deck, obviously, but like you know, yeah, it's I, I, they're my favorite cards. Like I I I, I still play with this. So so the second Galaxy Eyes got announced for Duel Links, I had like eight thousand gems saved up, and I burned through all of them to get a couple of copies of Galaxy Eyes, and I had like 
a day one ready Galaxy Eyes deck to just one shot kill. Devin blew just, through all his cummies. I did. I did all my cummies in that game. I feel there's oh. certain strategies though which are always going to be meta in that game though. Like I again, I haven't kept up with it in well over a decade. But I still feel like the Exodia deck is going to be meta no. forever. No. Nope. Nope. Really? Yeah, it nope. hasn't been meta really? like ever. Yeah, the thing with Exodia is that you have to heavily rely on a lot of draw cards that are yeah. literally banned or unplayable. Um and the thing with those draw cards is like you have to sacrifice a shitload of stuff to use them. Yeah. So hmm. when they the reason why I know I know you guys like to to meme and like people are like, well, why is this card banned? Like Pot of Greed. I know that Pot of Greed is what banned. What does it do, by the way? You draw two cards from your deck, which in a game like Yu-Gi-Oh! is inherently a busted. But like basically whenever they add that? whenever they make cards in Yu-Gi-Oh!, they have to make sure that they are not making cards that make it easier to summon cards like Exodia or, or not summon, but use Exodia's effect because like a lot of cards are like, like, like uh, the, the hundred dollar card I got the pot of extravagance or what yeah. either of them it's, I have to banish like six cards from my extra deck randomly to use it. And then I draw two cards, but then I can't draw cards for the rest. I can't draw cards by effect for the rest of that turn. So mm. it's like I can't just constantly draw, 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 draw until I get my Exodia. That's why they have to gimp those cards. Like it, it's it's it, Exodia is a meme deck. If we're being honest, like like there's a great video explaining why Exodia is bad and why no one plays Exodia. Is it by DZ? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I love that guy. Me too. I love that guy's content. Um, but like I don't know who that is. He he's a he's a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, YouTuber. He just makes a lot of videos on YouTube. Even when about, I'm not playing the game actively, I still watch his videos. Yeah, like he 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 also gets like review copies of of box sets. He does unboxing vids. He talks about cards. He talks about combos. And back in the day, he's a really great YouTuber to watch if you have huh. a passing interest in Yu-Gi-Oh. You want to get back into it. Highly highly oh, recommended DZ. Um, I, I look. I, I might have some more disposable income these days, but I assure you that disposable income is tied up in uh, Dreamcast stuff. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not saying you have to spend money on Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, I do it, and it's a terrible. Hey, three alternative white dragons. Yeah, I found my three alt white dragons. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, okay. So, so, but, but when it comes to when it comes to uh, Exodia, it's just it's basically like, yeah, you can win in one turn, but there are so many more consistent cards that you can play in Yu-Gi-Oh to win. Yeah. That just why would you ever play Exodia? Like it, it's just it's hard to explain. It, it it really is. I, f- it, I feel I feel like with how many decades there are of cards now, there's probably a viable deck for it out there. Maybe, but you'd have to really go through a bunch of cards to yeah, see. Yeah, like, we're not what saying is that there usable. isn't a way to build the deck that isn't viable, but they are very fringe decks, and for the most part, like nine out of ten expensive. times, you're going to pay way more money for how much it's going to fail. So it'll still yeah. meme every once in a while and be like, "Ha But then, like, is Ash Blossom still a thing? Ash Blossom is very much still a thing. Yeah, you just try to fucking get an Exodia, and I just Ash, Ash Blossom. You have to fucking discard every fucking card you did. Depending you, on the facts. Yeah, can you negate? No, because it's like it's it depends. It hands. depends on the draw slash burn engine that he's using. Because certain yeah. cards would like be like if this gets cancelled, then you don't get those cards because this effect takes place after this thing. So if you ash blossom at this step, then it negates that and then you lose all those things. That's yeah, that's another the thing. stuff from back in the day, yeah. That's another thing, thing about Yu Gi Oh. Yeah, that's another thing about Yu Gi Oh so confusing is like the chains and then if slash win card effects, like if this card is played, then you get to do this. But if it's a win effect, you can miss the timing. And like, there's nothing in the rule book that says missing the timing. So like, mm. like, like, uh, there's a okay, there, there's a specific card. Uh, it's like Elemental Hero Dark Bright or something like that. And yeah. you send a card to the graveyard, and when you do, you summon another card. So since it says win, like if you send a card like U Bell to the graveyard. Yubel's effect is when it goes to the graveyard, you can special summon the next form of Yubel. But since another card was summoned before Yubel's effect went off, since it was a win effect, its effect is uh, it, its effect misses the timing. You can't summon the next form of Yubel, which like like I didn't understand that for the longest time. But it's also Yubel, so who gives a shit? 
I just remember the stuff with Train was always you work your way basically from the most recent back. That's yeah. that's how I remember it. I think I, I'm I'm assuming that hasn't changed because like that makes it sense. has not changed. I found my last yeah. deck. You found it? Yeah, my blue eyes invoked. Uh damn. I also found my fucking prize card, Legendary Dragon of White. Dude, I still don't have the Legendary Magician of Dark. Oh, I God. want that card. Dude, I know it says it can't be used in duels, and it's like a fucking, uh, it's a replica, but like, yeah. I still love this fucking card, dude. Like, it's not going to come it's across cool. on the fucking camera very well, but I love it's this It's a cool shit. card. It's it's a very cool card. I, as much yeah. as I don't like Blue Eyes White Dragon, I can admit a lot of the cards that have been made that are based off of it and work with it are really cool, but I'm still going to say it. I know people are going to be upset with me. Blue Eyes White Dragon is a literal no-brain uh, strategy and I have no have brain. Think. All I want to do is summon yeah. monster and hit big. I mean, I, I do the it's, same it's thing with galaxy brain. eyes. It's it's always been the beat stick. It's always been you know the here's a great big monster with three thousand attack points. Fuck you. That's oh always shit! What it's right, been. I, I mean, forgot. Even back in the day, the, the sh- yeah, even back in the day, the strat was basically here's ancient rules. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I uh, like it's it's it, always been that, you know? Like I, I think everyone's kind of okay with it being the the no brain strat. It's 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 like picking it's like picking a rushdown character in a fighting game. You're not here for a long time, but you're here to hit people hard in the meantime. No, I feel like Wait. I feel like playing blue eyes <laughs> is more like playing Ragna or like, you know, a main character in like a fucking fighting game, like a Ragnar or a Soul, because nah, uh, I, that's that's a dark that's a dark mission Because I hit that's big mission deck. I hit big, I don't think about it, and then I just repeat the same thing I did over and over to hit that big. <laughs> That's you know a rushdown character. Is Ragnar a rushdown? I didn't really much, didn't play much. I don't know it. what Ragnar would be classified as, Shoto. Yeah, technically Ragnar would be a Shoto. Uh, I mean, you, you can rush he's down with Shoto as a Street your... Fighter. Right, but... A full disclosure, I love fighting games. I cannot tell you the terminology for fighting games. <laughs> Terrami is uh, a Whereas I can. Ter- Terami's yeah. a rushdown character. Wouldn't Noelle be rushdown as well, from my understanding of how she works? Adam is <laughs> being sucked into the ether. We cannot hear it. Okay, so 22, 25. Can, he, he can starts... you hear me now? Barely. Can... We are losing him. Uh, We're losing no! him. No! No! Oh, okay. No! He's back. He's back. Oh, I'm back. I was asking, would Noelle also be considered a rushdown from my understanding of her? Because it seems to be a lot of her stuff is based on just getting up in dead ass, but also a lot of uh, forcing the cross-ups and forcing the uh, situations out and basically forcing mistakes. Noelle is basically, um, do you like mashing D? Yes. There you go. I know, I I I do what little of Blaz did play. I did play her because the driver combos, particularly in the uh, first Blaz Blue, uh, the very very first one about on 360, the sheer amount of infinites they forgot to patch out with her was the funniest fucking thing. Yeah, calamity like, trigger. She was, was a game. so busted. She was so busted. Calamity trigger um, was talk. definitely a game. Yeah, because like I I like a lot of rushdown characters. So like, obviously in Street Fighter, I play a lot of Cammy. In Marvel Three, I was playing. Uh, who was I playing? Trish. I was playing Doom. I was playing Sentinel. Uh, in stuff like uh, Garou, I kind of like playing Terry. I you know I, I I very much like the whole rush that shit down kind of vibe. There was um, a there was an old meme with Blaze Blue where with Jin Kisaragi, it was just like, "Did you use Ice Car? Yes. Did it hit? Yes. Do it another attack. Did it did it not hit? Or like, did it hit and you hit no? Like, do the Ice Car again? Hmm. And it's just like it just revolved around doing the Ice Cars. It was dumb. The only joke I know about Blaze Blue and Jin is um is that what kind of car does Mister Kisaragi drive? A Nissan. A Nissan. Yeah. A, yes. I have the Errata Chaos Emperor Dragon. Dragon. Oh, the, the pre or No, the, the erotic one from Shonen Jump. Oh, nice. Yeah. I thought you said the erotic dragon. I was like, no, what kind of erotic? <laughs> so there's been a couple of misprints, and also this thing's effect was insane. It's so insane that they had to ban it. And then in order to bring it back, they literally printed a new effect, and that's the new effect that even the old cards would have to follow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my they brother's talking about with, this. They do that a lot with different cards. Like the uh, most recent card to get an erotic, I think, was Firewall Dragon. Because it used to be oh, like yeah. whenever its effect would go off, you could summon another Cyberus monster, and people would just build Cyberus decks and just summon and summon and summon and summon. I didn't know one. they finally like, eroded that. It, it got yeah. that bad. Yeah, they had to ban it for a while because well, you could one turn kill with Firewall yeah. Dragon. And isn't that like, like a main character card too? 
Yes, that is the first main character card to get a ban and also an errata. So yeah, because JP was telling me my younger brother still plays for the record, and he was telling me a lot of cards are now getting retconned, which I thought was the mm-hmm. funniest thing. Like, hold on. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, um, watch out. He's, he's, but, get, he's getting the crew okay. Where was I? No, okay. So like a lot of cards get. <laughs> so a lot of cards get get what's called eroded because their effects are so fucking busted. Um, mm-hmm. they in order to see viable play they have to be remade um so that way they their effects can be nerfed and not go into one one turn kills um so a lot of cards just either get the ban hammer and are never unbanned and some cards get banned and then they get eroded and they're slowly phased back in but i think what your brother is talking about the retconning of certain cards that sounds like retrains of certain cards because they are going through uh, with this new, with the last couple of sets they've done, they've done what's called um, retrains, and it's cards that have already existed getting new forms um, that were either similar to an old effect that they kind of had in the manga or whatever or the anime. Uh, mm. Like there's like a new Kairu Shin coming out, which was like an old first gen five star monster that didn't have an effect but was used by like Mako Tsunami. Um, a whole bunch of like insect cards that Weevil used. Uh, a whole bunch of like, uh, I mean, the Blue Eyes itself has so many retrains. It's not even funny. Blue uh, Eyes Dark card. Magician. Yeah, Blue Eyes Shine. That's an old, old card. Um, Deep Eyes White Dragon. Def- fun fact. Fun fact about the Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. Did you know that when it first came out, you couldn't use it because Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon had not been released yet in the U.S.? Yep. Yeah, I knew that because I got fucking uh, the Shining Dragon from the movie because I hated that movie. I hated it with a fucking passion, but I wanted it's that so goddamn bad. Shining Dragon fucking thing. I just, I just remembered I have the Blue Eyes from the original, uh, Blue Eyes Ultimate from the original Gold series set with the misprint on it. There's a misprint. It's yeah, it's got the wrong defense value. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, no, it hit me. I've, there's like the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. I have like a couple different versions of that in that binder, which Jonathan has now found and is bringing out to me next time he visits. Um, I think it's got the it's got either too low or too high of a defense value in Gold Series One. Let me see. Blue Eyes Ultimate it's Dragon. Kind of, it's spring. kind of infamous because they never bothered correcting it. First Yu-Gi-Oh card I ever touched. This is literally the first card I ever it. touched. Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yep, I got this in fourth grade. And, and Xander touched it, and then and then never touched grass again. Touched grass plenty of times, just with my feet. Uh, when the, when Devin's the, currently looking this up, when the starter deck evolution Kaiba came out, I was like, "This design sucks." Uh, well, that's the L- I have that. That's the LAB one. I have it looks a lot better in the LAB version. Yeah, I still prefer the cute starter deck Kaiba and uh, Dark Duel Stories one. Oh yeah, I mean the original art's always this got a place in my heart, but I really love the LAB one. They, yeah, have, they have one. a the one that came out with the movie packs is pretty cool. I think this one. Yeah, that one. I like that one. I have that in Japanese. So do I. There's also one. There's also the the Shonen Jump one, the tenth anniversary one that has Kaiba on it. Yeah, the, the one in my Blood binder that Joey's bringing out is the one of it. Yeah, we are. Uh, what's what's the defense value on that one, by the way? Nice. Like, nice. Xander, what's the uh, defense value? <laughs> ah, cunt, 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 cunt. No, it's just being a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear anything. The funny thing is he's gonna actually be recorded completely on his end. I know, I know. The funny, I the funny thing is I hear you guys hear fine. I, the funny thing is I can hear you guys fine. It's just the system is being a complete cunt today. There it goes. Get, now we can hear again. Xander, what's the defense value on the ultimate dragon right there? Uh, it's correct. It should be thirty eight hundred. Like the fucking uh, the legacy Kaiba thingy. Uh, thir- yeah, thirty eight hundred. Yeah, Z- uh, Devin, double check what it is. Gold Series it's, 1 Ultimate Dragon. It's sh- I-, I believe it's wrong. Is that a British or an American card? Both. Smoth. Uh, the Gold Series Rare comes out to the same 3800 However, uh, it does sell for about $33. So that's not, uh, that's not hang on, hang on. Neo Blue Eyes. I'm checking. I'm checking. Oh, wait, that's on eBay. Hold on. Troll and Toad has it for Dark Magician. 10 bucks. Never mind. I have that card. Blue That's eyes, the movie pack. Gold Series Dark 1, Blue Eyes Ultimate. Hang on, here we go. That's the dual power. I want to fuck Yeah, no, this it's one. wrong. It's a, it's a, the one of the Gold Series 1 is 3,000, not 3,800. 
oh wait that is weird yeah, I remember there being something about that. Like, they had to put a thing out when I was playing that, like, if you're using this... Because Blue Eyes decks were still very much a thing, and since around that time, you know, fusing from the hand was a thing all of a sudden, and, you know, people were uh, playing Blue Eyes decks more frequently because they could just whap that thing out. Um, mm. uh, like, they had to put a note out saying, even if you're playing the gold version, the defense value is 3,800, not 3,000. Um, actually, a cool thing about Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon uh, is that it was recently, most recently used with uh mm -hmm. these cards called uh masters of the tinny and what masters All of the right. tinny are there there are monsters that get better effects when there are no effect monsters on the field um and one of them lets you special summon a non-effect fusion monster from your extra deck and the best target for that was blue eyes ultimate dragon because it's got the highest attack point value of a fusion monster that has no effect that's cool that's a good yeah. idea yeah I, I hate that I know. Ones. Oh God, no! Don't no. Ali wants to make a deck of those, but no. I want to fuck them with those. No, <laughs> I hate you. Oh God, I hate them. I uh, why? Why'd you bring those up? Why'd you bring up fairy tales? Why? Do you, why do you not like fairy tales? It's just it's just furry bait the card. You know, one of those is banned, right? The fairy tale snow, I think. Yeah, snow's banned. Look at sleeper. Tell me you wouldn't fuck sleeper. I would not. Devin would, would not totally fuck, fuck sleeper. sleeper. Devin's a fox. He totally fuck sleeper. Look, it's I would not. not. I don't yeah. think there's. I don't think I'd fuck many things. So, in Yu-Gi-Oh. Okay, so all the fairy tale cards uh, are it's spelled T A I L L L L, uh, and the joke is they're furry versions of fairy tales. That's the joke. Okay, it's a very funny That's the jo joke. I hate them. Hey, check it out, Dark Asmodeus. That's an old ass card. I, I we spent thirty minutes talking about fucking Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> oh, check it out, hey, King I mean, of D. That's a good card. Is it King of King of D or Lord of D. This one's King There's of D. There's two. There's King of D uh -huh. and Lord of D. King of D is a retrain Lord of D. Isn't there a uh, new God. of D that just came out too? Yeah, me of D. Oh my god, Devin. No, like I'm pretty sure there's like another Kaiba of D guy that was just, like just announced, like Master of D. <laughs> I'm not I know that sounds like a shit post and normally I would be shit posting right now but I don't I'm not making this up I'm looking it up now. Oh. Okay, even as a kid I could not take that card seriously. Master Lord of D, King of D, Master of D. It's like we get it, Kaiba, you like the D. Oh, jeez. Yeah, okay, can we just Okay, I just want to talk about this real quick. So since we're still on Yu-Gi-Oh. In the newest movie, can we agree I've not it's seen all the movies? Okay, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say what happens in this movie. Can we all agree that the whole plot of the movie, for the for for reference, Adam, is that Kaiba wants to bring the Pharaoh back to life and to uh, back to the real world to duel him again, and in order right. to do that, he literally creates a space elevator to a satellite that's in the Kaiba Corp logo of because of course it is a zero G environment to make a AI that can perfectly rebuild the Millennium Puzzle. So it does, because it took Yugi eight years to build it. Kaiba got it rebuilt in like a couple of hours. But, so he, he makes that spaceship to bring the, or the, the satellite to bring the Pharaoh back to, uh, to the real world so he can duel him again. Can we all just agree it's a little gay that he is going that far just to see the Pharaoh again? A little? That's like it's a, a little bit. Okay. Little. Kevin, That's it would a bit be more a than little a little gay if he stopped at the hologram. It would be a little gay if he stopped at the hologram because then the hologram would at least be able to fulfill a fantasy. It is 100% the most homoerotic thing I've ever seen in anything Japanese that didn't involve actual fucking boy fucking going on that I, has ever existed in the entirety of anything. <laughs> he is trying to travel to the afterlife so that he can stuff a fucking pharaoh's cheeks with his fucking billionaire cum. Yes, Devin, it goes beyond a little gay. It's the gayest. It is the most gay. Yeah, it is the gayest of gay. gay. Like it, like people will so deny good. it, but like up and down. The tyrant like, of D. It's the tyrant of D. That's so gay. Uh, but like Yu-Gi-Oh, in and of itself, is so fucking gay. There's so many parts in Yu-Gi-Oh that are just it's just straight up just gay. I'm sorry. Like the two I'm main sorry. characters, Kyber and Yugi, walk around in leather coats, straps, belts, and tight, tight spandex it's, trousers. It's called fashion sweaty. Look it up. The tyrant. Oh, they're sweaty, D. all right. They're sweaty, all right. 
But no, I mean like like Yu-Gi-Oh, base Yu-Gi-Oh, pretty gay. Yu-Gi-Oh GX. Have you seen Jaden and Johan together for like five minutes? Like they're not only that, but like okay, like we've all seen um to hear in the US's ass. Okay, like it's literally one of my emails. Cake. It's his ass. Cake. That card is beyond caked up. Adam froze again, but yeah, that card. Adam, you might need to just like turn off video. You're freezing like a motherfucker. Cake, 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 You know, actually, why am I streaming at 1080p 60 frames per second? Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Why? Uh, Try that now. There we go. So, yeah. back to what we were talking about, though. So, like, Neos is caked up beyond belief for no fucking reason. You know who designed that card? Jaden did. Jaden is an ass man. All right? Hell yeah. And he's yeah. totally dating Johan. They are, they are completely gay for each other. You can't tell me otherwise. I'm sorry, those boys gay, and don't even get me started on five Ds. Don't, don't. It's it's more fine. like five dicks. There you go. There's Aye. a joke. That, but no, it's like it, it. It's just so gay. Hey, called by the grave, and that's and I love it. And I love it. Okay. I love Yu Gi Oh. It's fun. Hey, blue eyes twin burst dragon. Hey, that's a good card. But yeah, that's uh, that's the Yu-Gi-Oh rant there on just fuck man. It's not really it's a rant. So I mean, just... two of the three of us are actively LGBT plus Q. What oh, fuck? I fucked that up. LGBT plus. Uh, fucking um, people and you know you're yeah. actively bisexual. I am in a sexual relationship with the literal moon, so I don't <laughs> really know what that qualifies me as, and I have no gender. But fucking, I'm gonna literally, you know, I'm gonna send you the the card. Just attack the moon. Yeah, it's not really a rant. It's Somewhere more of like a rave, you know. You're like Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. really be out here representing the culture. It does. Oh god, I just found a rug that Zana's gonna want. A rug? A rug. I've never owned a is rug in those, my life. Is it one of those rugs that's just a Yu-Gi-Oh card just blown up? No, it's better. Put it in muted nerds for Xander. Oh what? Okay, you come here. Let, let's see what's going on. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it is to a Xander's very relevant interest on a rug. Is that the blue eyes white dragon? They could have picked like a good yes. up on a sneaker. Yeah. That's like one of the grossest fucking Nikes I've ever seen. Well, it's probably because it's a fucking rug, Xander. No, okay, so like you see how it's got the straps it's a blue up the side? White Nike. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I don't like that kind of design. Um, so let me put my fucking goddamn childish Yu-Gi-Oh cards away and grab some shoes to show you. <laughs> so with, uh. with my normal shoes and shit, what I like is like a, a like one design. We don't have extra straps coming up the side to like make it look super extra or whatever. These are just some fucking Jordan 13s. Fucking okay. Just nice, sleek, stylish, like functional and shit. And then whenever I do get fancy, even with like these robot shoes, there's not like a strap coming up the side. There's no like specific little weird thingies going on. The thing I don't like specifically about that one is it's combining like, like it's combining like a, uh, uh, like a Air Max 97 or 95 style with like a weird strappy thingy that some of like the latest shoes have come out with on the side. And I just don't like that. Do you have Reebok pumps thing. that you can pump? No, I only have Nikes. Oh. Yeah, that's boring. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Reebok pumps. Will you pump it up? But at, did, the whole thing started this conversation. Didn't the Reebok pumps get at, like sued for breaking people's ankles and shit? I have no. Oh idea. no, wait, those were the 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 step ups or something. The step shoes. You remember they were marketed to I women no back idea. in like the the mid two thousands, like and then like early twenty tens. Where it was these shoes? It might have been Skechers, where the ske Skechers. Okay, let me look this. Well, up. Skechers, Skechers are step ups, yeah. Yeah, I used to own a decent pair of Skechers. I'm pretty sure Kim Kardashian did like a promo for him too. How was the first time I ever saw her? I was like, this bitch is gonna be a problem. Let's see, Skechers. <sighs> I'm pretty sure Kim Kardashian would do a promo for fucking infanticide if there was enough money in it, okay? All right. So, I mean, her dad did one for though, homicide. What was I going to say, though? Uh, the whole thing joking. that got Shape us up. on the subject was like the, 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 the price gouging uh, of these things. Uh, 
So like I said, yeah, like the cards that have really good effects and are meta are going to cost a shitload more than most other cards. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. And it's, it's just crazy finding good reprints in certain like boxes and certain tins. Like I found a, in my most recent box I got, um, I got a, uh, a $30 card and I paid $20 for the tin. So that, that tin paid for itself and then some, uh, and it's just hard to find stuff that like, like, like does that just pays for itself like that. Well, theoretically, every packet will pay for itself if you sell every single card, you know? Not really. Some, some pack, some packs will not be worth shit. Like you'll get a card that's like maybe a dollar, like worth a dollar. Mm. Fucking Adam expressing his surprise at the shoe market whenever I brought up my fucking fleece foam posits and shit. Fucking like, the f- shoes are always like that. It, yeah. th- well, I know they're like that. I just didn't realize they hit that high. Th- uh, there are, a, I think it's the Galaxy foam posits that are like over a grand, and they were over a grand like three years ago when I was buying shoes. So I was like, well, I'm never getting those Galaxies. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, full disclosure, just in case anybody's like, oh, I'm a hype beast or whatever. Fucking like, I have only ever bought like secondhand or heavily discounted shoes. I've not paid more than fucking $70, $80 on a pair of any of the shoes I own. I, I hunt down good deals, which is why I don't have nearly as much as I would if I just was like, yeah, let me pay, buy a fucking pair of shoes every paycheck. The only fucking brand new shoes I bought were the fucking, um, the fucking um, blue and white colorway phone posit twos and I still got those on a heavy discount because I know a guy you have a shoe guy? yeah I have a shoe guy (coughs) Devin what's the most you've ever spent on a single card? before or after discounts? before okay so before discounts uh, and yeah, trading. Like, also trading because okay. okay. trading in wouldn't really count. Just bring, you know, you're, yeah. still, you're still trading. Um, um, no, it's it. actually it's it's still about thirty something dollars. Uh, so okay, so the card itself, it's a sixty dollar card. Mm-hmm. Um, BCP, and I got it. I got it for thirty one. Uh, it right. is. It is, and and it wasn't even for my deck. It's for it was for <laughs> my wife's deck. And it's Elemental oh, Hero. It's still a $60 card then. Yeah, it's Elemental Hero Liquid Soldier. And we got it for 60 It's a $60 card. I bought it twice. I got one time for 25 bucks and one time for 31 bucks. And that is oh, actually... because you're trading stuff in. Yeah, and that's actually a deal. Like, I traded in some some good cards and cards I just wasn't using anymore to get it because it's just that good of a card. And guess what its fucking effect is? Uh, when you summon it, you immediately Draw win the cards? duel, but you have to bring your no. opponent to orgasm with their consent. No. With consent? No. Uh, is it you have to reach under the table and play Find the Sausage? No. I'm being serious. Oh. Like, take a, just take a guess at what the actual effect does. Draw two cards. There you go. Ah! That's Fucking what it does. Green, it literally, when it, when it is fusion summoned away, sent to the graveyard by a fusion spell... Or banished because of fusion spell, you can draw two cards and then discard one. <sighs> the um, yeah. So you would say sixty bucks it's a, is the it, most you spent on a single card. I, I would say I would say yes. It's not my most expensive card, but the most I spent on a singular card would be about sixty dollars. Yeah. My most expensive card is still that that pot of whatever. Uh, that's like a hundred yeah. bucks. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we I think we all know the most I spent on a single video game. It's still not the most expensive video game I own, but you know. Yeah. The, the reason why I asked, why I find it interesting that like people like you, I think all three of us will buy these things and then just not look at the price of them for six months, a year, two years, something even longer, and then we'll be smacked across the face with "What the fuck?" when we see it for sale and go, "That can't be right." And then we'll look into it further and go, "Oh fuck, that is right." The most yep. the most I ever spent on a card was like fucking thirteen bucks on this gold alternative white dragon. The other two I pulled. Well, I'm all meant for like your shoe. I remember like your shoe collections, and like, I think you said that most of your spent was like seventy bucks, and there's like a pay uh, you've got bucks. on Twitter. You're ranting, so there's a pay you're ranting around on Twitter that are like six hundred now. Uh, yeah, so the the fleece foam posits, at least in size fourteen, the last sale I confirm, yeah. not the going for price, but the last sale because the going for price anybody can fucking ask for anything on like StockX or whatever. You can well, look yeah. at whatever. Mm-hmm. The last sale I saw was four hundred thirty eight dollars, and that was as of that Twitter rant. 
And I bought them for those ones Is specifically. One? I bought them for fifty. They were missing their insole because I guess the guy wanted the insole. So I was like, okay, I'll buy a fucking ten dollar fucking Doctor Scholl's insole, and they're like my daily driver shoes. The thing I like most about them is like foam posits are kind of like quote unquote indestructible. They're like that one like mold like futuristic plastic material thing that they're made out of and shit. Um, so they last you yeah. for a while. They mold your feet and all that. But those ones in particular are then layered on the outside with like a, a wool fleece. And so they can be both like a casual shoe and a fucking like a like a cool ass fucking like I'm wearing my suit, but I'm still wearing my sneaker shoe, you know? They're like versatile. So they're like a pair of Converse then? Sure. Then I think it's probably the only pair of shoes I know of that I could wear with a suit as well as casually, you know? Fun fact, Converse are also Nike now. Oh, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, me and you are Nike bros. And me over here, it's like I don't really bother with shoes. Yeah, see, I'm gonna get Devin. I mean, the last well, Devin, what's your foot size? Thirteen. Damn, just one below me. Uh, so I'm gonna get yeah. you a pair of fucking green flight posits, and we're gonna go on the town one day. Uh, green flight posits, for the record, are the shoes that the uh, Green Goblin was wearing in San Raimi Spider Man. What? Yeah, I'm not even kidding. Look it up. Uh, green Goblin <laughs> shoes, San Raimi Spider Man. That's the green flight posits. I guess now I'm gonna have to put that up I on screen because Devin's looking that up. Okay, I don't know what th these look. These look disgusting. Actually, what? Okay, no, there's no way. I don't like these shoes. What the fuck? I don't are get shoes. The last pair of sneakers I bought were like thirty bucks on discount. I I spent more on my work shoes. Green Goblin foam posits. Yeah, I these I don't like these at all. Bro, actually. these are so cool though. No, they, what the fuck See, are these? Okay, do you I feel like we're demonstrating the difference between normal second. people and sneakerheads right here. He's gonna nope. show me more sneakers. Oh, okay. No. The reason why okay, I, I don't, I don't reason, like him either, for the record, yeah. I think that kind of fuggly too. No, okay. The reason why I'm not big on shoes, not just these shoes, but just shoes in general, is because like I am so rough on shoes. Like I will buy a pair. I haven't bought new shoes in uh, pre-pandemic since before the pandemic started. Like yeah, I'm no, I, still, I, I, I'm with you on that one. The, yeah. the, the only reason I bought shoes recently was I started a new job. Yeah, like I am so rough on shoes that my shoes will start falling apart, and but I like I keep them, like I still have that pair, and like they, I'm just terrible with shoes. Like I will just they fall apart all the time on me, man. All right, here we go. Right, here he goes. Like that is that is fuck ugly. Adam froze. He's frozen. These are fucking amazing. He froze. These are the goddamn toe pass flight that closets, is... and they're fucking amazing. You guys have no culture. My other, my other favorite ones ugly. are the goddamn copper flight posits. Oh, oh god, that looks like Donald Trump would shit no, on. No, they would have to be gold. These are like the Thanos shoes. The Thanos shoes. I also have, unfortunately, a size too small of the pure blue ones that are cool. Uh, however, size thirteen. Uh, those ro these robot shoes. These are the flight posit twos. These are the second design of those. These are the Kevin Garnett uh, fucking. Olympics ones. These are my favorites. They look kind of cool. Those look kind of cool, but like, like again, I don't buy shoes for like the aesthetic. I buy shoes because I have to buy them so I can walk around. Yeah, well, like these are yeah. also, are cool, and this one in particular is made of that weird ass material that like this just lasts. I'm gonna have these shoes ten years from now, and they're gonna be fine. I mean, but can you if beat they... someone to death with them? Good. But can you beat someone to death with? Yes. Them? Yes, Probably. actually, these and the flight and the foam posit uh, fucking uh, fleece ones are heavy enough to beat a motherfucker to death with if I have to. But they're also comfortable. So, um, comfortable. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, these are reinforced with a fucking uh, carbon fiber plate right here. Oh, nice. So they'll do an extra five seconds a lap on the Nurburgring? Yeah. <laughs> Now they're basketball shoes, so they're not made for like jogging and stuff. Although I still do it anyway. If I want to jog, though, I usually switch over to my uh, 95s or 97s. My 95s are up because I fucked up the sole on one of them, so I gotta repair it. Yeah, I, I, I have I, no I, idea I, what those are. I'm fucking terrible with shoes, so that's why I, I I don't. I think it's because I know how I am with shoes. And I tear up shoes all the time because I, I just I, I'm just heavy on them. Yeah, same. You've seen like my I fucking shoes. Any pair. You've seen my shoes before. You've seen, but I always bought like you've seen mine. I always bought like shitty ass shoes before, and like 
I do not condone purchasing brand new Nikes. I do not condone condone buying Nikes like used. I do not condone purchasing Nikes at all. They use sweatshop essentially save labor in fucking third world countries. They do not take accountability for their business practices. They're harmful. However, they're cool. Their shoes are super fucking cool. And if some fucking mom whose son moved out and doesn't need their size 14 fucking humongous freak shoes is selling them for $20, I'm going to fucking buy them. I'm sorry. There's no ethical consumption under capitalism, but them already been bought. Them already been bought, man. I'm not paying Nike for them. Bing putt. But also, if you get no, quality I, shoes, they'll last longer. Uh, I used to think that yeah. they were the same materials, but they're not. Well, maybe if I get a pair of quality shoes, like, I'll feel better about using them. It's just, like, every shoe I buy, it's just, it, they, they fall apart Idea. on me. And I just, again. Idea. Just okay. look for a pair of shoes you like. Doesn't matter the cost. Look for a pair of shoes, and I'll buy them for you for your birthday. I would feel bad, but okay. When is your birthday? March 7th. March. It's like March, right? You're just for Christmas. Christmas is next. I already yeah. got him a Christmas gift. Oh, right. I forgot about that. You got my hand job. Wait. <laughs> yeah, I paid his wife to give him a hand job on Christmas. <laughs> No, I didn't like, do that. Like, here's 20 bucks. Oh, my God. $3? I'm getting a $3 hand job for Christmas? 20 20 Oh, 20 thanks. I would pay your wife at least $75 to give you a hand job. I respect her. Sex work is real yeah, work. Yeah, it's real work. Even if it's my wife. So, okay, okay. 75 bucks is blowjob money. Let's be no, real. No, no, it's not. Not in Washington. The cost of living's fucking 23 fucking 70 bare minimum. That's before the 5.9% inflation Ooh. we fucking hit at right now. So, no. Motherfuckers gotta get a handy at 75. And I'm paying Washington rates because Jeez. I have to pay Washington sales tax. I hate this conversation already. <laughs> I'd say Pennsylvania with talking. 75 is gonna eat your head. 75 <laughs> might get you anal in Pennsylvania. <laughs> In Texas, nah, I think nah, that's at least a hundred. Whatever you that's want, a, that's at least a hundred. No, hundred and fifty for anything. Amish good. anal. Hundred fifty for clean. Oh my god. Well, that 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 that'll, that'll run you about three pounds of tomatoes. Three pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh Jesus. Uh, oh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> Bye. <sighs> no, not really. Fuck not yeah. I was about to say, um, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh dear, man! You know I have not been. I oh, say, oh no, no, go ahead. I say I have not been sleeping great the past couple of nights. Oh right, because of the the little. We got beans. children. All right, you have children. Yeah, so children. I, I will warn you guys beforehand. If you're gonna talk about the cats, please do not talk about bowel movements again. I cannot handle it. We okay. are not going cool. to no. We me and Liz, uh, me and Liz are fostering uh, four like uh, orphan kittens, and like they're adorable. They're very sweet. They scream. And like it's every four hours, like clockwork, they scream. You get them the milkies, they go back to sleep, and they start screaming again. And it's like having God. a child. Yeah. Well, it's like having a child. I mean, instead of being stuck with it for eighteen years, you've only got to put up with it for a few weeks. Yeah, that's the upside yeah, to having the point, a cat. Those are the point they can go to uh, solid food at least. But like, God damn, God damn, they're cute, but. This is why you get them at eight weeks from like a foster, you know, from like a foster home. I am the foster home, god damn It's a dumb it. and obvious it's question, like, like... Um, but when you guys feed yeah. them, do you repeatedly say under your breath, like, I would, mommy, milkies, mommy, milkies, as you're giving them milk? <laughs> Honestly, the first time, okay, yes. Okay, cool. Well, I'm not insane. Um, Jesus Christ. But now, nah, like, they, it's so funny. They've started to get the hang of, like, being hand-fed now. Um, the first couple of days, it was a syringe feeding where you basically put the the the, the, the end in their mouths. They'd be confused. You squirt it in, and they go, and they go, oh, okay, I get what's going on here. Now they've worked out what the how the bottle works, and it's so funny feeding them with the bottle because they just chew on it and just like it. They complain about it for like two seconds, and then the, the milk starts coming out, and it's just like the best way I can describe it is like you know that re you always see these guys at like Seven Elevens in like the middle of summer, the really, 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 really humongous fat guys. Who are like sat there with like the giant slushy things, the big gulps, whatever they're called, and they like start sucking up the straw and they do like a solid like thirty to forty seconds suck, and you're like, damn dude, are you gonna stop and take a breath? No, this guy keeps going. That's what it's like, but it's about four inches long and a cat. <laughs> <laughs> he did a forty second suck. Oddly and it's four inches long. 
That's all I heard. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, fucking uh, no. You know, it's funny. I live, like, right down the street from a 7-Eleven, but I never go and buy anything from there. I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I, oh, I don't like 7-Eleven. I don't, I, I don't like 7-Eleven. It's not because of the meat with Kevin. It's... Well, yeah, like in Pennsylvania, we have Wawa and Sheets, and yeah, Sheets sucks, but it's still better than Seven Fucking Eleven. All Seven Eleven's got is fucking taquitos and fucking giant hot dogs that taste like fucking dick. Yeah, Seven Eleven fucking sucks. The only reason you go to Seven Eleven is because they have five dollar fucking pizzas sometimes, and sometimes they have two for five dollars. <laughs> and the pizza's the only thing that ain't shit. I'd rather pay the, like you know go to Wawa and get a decent hot dog for that. I, I I hate to I hate to give sheets a big up, but like for a few bucks, I can get myself a little fry sample thingy with some onion rings and some tater tots and some cheese. Do you know how many times and, I've been know, fucking held at gunpoint at Seven Eleven, Adam? Probably one too many. Seven ju judging from that face. Fucking times. That's seven times too many. So when you get to the eleventh time, do they just like give you a free like like? I get a <laughs> Oh, cool. Uh, oh god damn it. Oh that sucks. Uh good god. To... Damn it, you said oh god damn it, you said sucks dick and my brain was like, oh I can make a joke about this because there's like a new sponsor thing. I wanted to make a sponsor joke. Um but currently because apparently there's like either, I'm not sure if it's a if it's a scam or if it's an actual sponsor, but like apparently there is a oh I found it, I found it. Um It's real. It's a sponsor that's, <laughs> that's trying to uh, get YouTubers. Auto blow? Yeah, auto blow. Did, did you see the Gilly the Kid <laughs> one? <laughs> yeah, I love Gilly. Dude. It's real. Oh it's it's the same company that was going around um, all the female influencers on Instagram and later Twitter, getting them to sell those like vibrators that wait, like suction on the clitoris. Wait, is that the melt, is that the one uh, that's like, version. ladies get the best vibrator here? Like, oh my yeah. god, that's the now they're moving to same YouTube? company, they're same company, to, bro. Okay, but they're going for the bro, male market. I, okay. Yeah, like uh, unironically, real uh, talk. I want Gilly to accept that, and I want him to make a fucking 3D Sonic the Hedgehog retrospective because I need to hear him say, Sonic's had a very rough transition to 3D. But before that, here's our support from our sponsor, Autoblow. I will die. <laughs> I will not need to watch the rest of the video. I will subscribe to his fucking Patreon if he fucking does that. Will you, will you, will you, know you actually you know, turn I'm, off... Hold on, will you actually turn off the, the, the sponsor blocking? Oh, so my sponsor block app has a thing if I press enter, it'll boop pop back i will actually fucking if like i see in the fucking description that he's sponsored by auto blow i will undo the sponsor skip and watch that fucking sponsorship segment of gilly the kid talking about auto blow and i want him to sell me you know, on auto blow i want him to tell me that my dick is fucking nothing without auto blow that i have not fucking come until i've come from auto blow i want to hear gilly the kid fucking tell me i need auto blow in my life i'm clipping this and sending it to him i'm sorry yeah <laughs> Auto blow people, I'm throwing it out there. I'm just gonna throw it out there. The Christmas video will be due at end of December. If you people get with my people and we talk it out, for, 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 I will do it. No nuts for five hundred dollars. Ooh, ooh, because that's that that, that that look up my rent. Look up my rent in December. Ooh. So like, I would, I would do hundred dollars. I'm if, just okay. If Auto blow wants happen. to sponsor the podcast. I'm yeah. down. Okay. I would auto totally blow. do it. Auto blow. If for whatever, f I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm actually gonna put the phrase "auto blow" in the tags of the fucking SoundCloud and YouTube uploads, so that way if they fucking look around and try to find something related to it, our fucking podcast pops up. It's the horsepod at gmail.com. Send us an offer, bare minimum five hundred dollars for each of us. So fucking one thousand five hundred dollars, fifteen hundred, even, way, even ways, yeah. and we will no nuts do an actual fucking ad read where I fucking ad lib the fucking beginning of a fucking thing where I talk about how you're the best goddamn product ever. You don't need to tell me shit about your product. Send me, send me a copy of your product and pay me. And fucking, <laughs> I will one hundred percent just ad lib a fucking a whole fucking sponsorship yeah, segment. I don't, I don't want a script. For $500, I'll do a script. But trust me, listen to some of the old things that I made up. That's all just made up on the spot. That's all made up on the spot. Pay me money, and I will fucking christen thee as the actual first sponsor of this podcast. And fucking, I will make fucking people want to fucking buy not one, not two, but seven auto blows at their local 7-Eleven. One for every day of the week. <laughs> one, one for, for every, every day, day of the week. week. 
<laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This is, this is my Friday on a whole. This one goes real ham. Jesus. <laughs> it's finally a Friday, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, Friday night, you just start, like, fucking giving you the auto-blow with that fucking song playing. It's, it's got a little disco ball on the end of it. Fuck it, Al. Fuck it, Al. Okay, look, man, I respect it. If, if, if any YouTuber I see gets sponsored by auto-blow... I will respect that. I'm going to yeah. be completely honest. I, I, like, I know, like... Uh, go ahead, Devin. Uh, sorry to cut you off. Okay. I, I know, like, a lot of YouTubers, like, will stand their ground and be like, sorry, I'm not going to do this, or some of them will try to be child-friendly, and that's fine. I respect that you wouldn't want to do it under those guises. But if it's, like, a YouTuber I follow that doesn't give a shit, like, if James Rolfe, the goddamn angry video game nerd, gets a goddamn auto-blow fucking, <laughs> <laughs> like, sponsorship, <laughs> I will lose my goddamn uh, mind. Like, like, it's like, but you know what? what, what if if like, the you know nerd what's... character used it, would he go from the angry video game nerd to the mildly perturbed video game nerd? <laughs> it's like, you, it's like, this game may suck, no. but balls, but you know what sucks my dick? Auto-blow! He's, 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 he's a post not clarity video game nerd. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I, I can't even oh. come up with a parody song because I'm fucking <laughs> He's gonna come up inside your ass. Oh He's gonna make God. your guts filled with gas. He's gonna make you regret the past. <laughs> <laughs> it's the post nut. Clarity Ned. Oh, for fuck's he like sake. reveals some. He oh. reviews some porn games or some shit. Something he get them demonetized, and so he gets paid by Auto Blow. And so like right after the sponsored segment, he goes from the angry video game nerd to the post nut clarity video game nerd. And then he re like reviews all the porn games and stuff that like on these old systems that he's ignored and shit. And then fucking each one he gets more and more disgusted with as he goes oh. on until like the worst offender no. pops up at him and he has to like Didn't physically he... like fight off one of the he motherfuckers. He re he reviews. Frank's Adventure. Didn't he already one, like two, three, touch four. upon like like the ones they, on the Atari like customs? Yeah, Revenge yeah. He, he, like he those like fifteen years ago. Yeah, yeah. touched upon it. You can't find that sort on YouTube. We can find it on. No, he did a full video on them, on Custer's Revenge, Beat Him and East, and Philly Flasher, and the other one. It's a full video. You can find it on their website. It's not on YouTube yeah. though. Yeah, but, uh, for obvious But reasons. like, there's way more than that. There's way deeper he can go. <laughs> yeah, we can go deeper in this asshole. Um, he he does like this fucking like Bible black and shit like discipline with all the scat scenes and shit. Good literally. God. Nope, no thank oh you. Oh my god! But no, like if it like like honestly like if he did an auto blow. Oh god! You know actually you know what I know what YouTuber I would love to see I know an auto blow segment say. aside from him. Scott the was no that would be good. He knows I'm gonna say comment yeah. etiquette. Fucking <laughs> sound, come on! You know he would have like the best fucking the sketch whole episode, if he had an auto. The whole blow. episode would be a commercial for auto blow, and the entire precipice of the sketch would be that he was too fucking busy fucking his auto blow to actually make a video, and so the entire sketch is him fucking like procrastinating making a video until the end of the world or some shit happens while he's coming in his auto blow repeatedly. No, but he's got the no, VR. No, no, he has no, the VR no, headset no, on no, too. No, oh, no, 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 no. The auto blow is called, is called my boy. Thus, it will be bouncing on my boy's dick. The auto blow is bouncing on the dick, and the dick the, is the boy's. The yeah. whole, yeah, the whole thing will be leading up to a bouncing on my boy's dick joke. I, I, you know what? I need it now. Actually, you know what? As long as it's not That's a fucking another goddamn Raycon ad, dude. I want to. I mean, no. From what if he made it like they pay more than Ray Shadow Legends? Wait, like, okay. I'm not gonna pull people what if he made it like Nobleberry though? Nobleberry auto blow. Nobleberry gives up prostitutes and instead switches to auto blow. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to find the murderer that uses auto blow that sucks the cum out of like all his victims until they dehydrate and die. Oh my god! <laughs> the killer is auto blow. I hate. Uh, I hate the. the I. I'm, but it, I'm but this, but I. I need it. I fucking need it. To reiterate, if you sponsor, it's the horse pod or insert title here, whatever the name you want to go with. Fifteen hundred bucks. We split it three ways evenly. Five hundred bucks each. Say no more, fam. We got you. If you want to directly sponsor Technical Cake Mix, it's still fifteen hundred, and these two boys are still getting five hundred bucks each. Find this fee. Okay, I'll accept that. I will. I will accept. That's that rent, too. maybe. I'm totally down. 
<laughs> Auto blow. <laughs> Hit us, Hit us up. up. It's the horse. Totally it's the pod at gmail. This space is for sale. <laughs> for sale. For sale. We this will space. Shill, for shill, sale. Shill. Speaking of shilling, make sure you sub to the sub and and like the like and and follow the follow. I don't know. We've done this so many times. You guys should know yeah. by now. <sighs> Before we go, uh, let, 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 we may or may not have an episode next week because I have been drafted into the space force. And as a new recruit of the he Space Force, I have been uh, drafted essentially to go out into outer space to visit our new moon base that has been infested with aliens. And I have to go clear out that moon base with the aliens. So I'm going to the moon. Yeah. I should be back Tuesday. So we might record and this message might not even matter. However, that's I was gonna say, that's if they don't blow up Buenos Aires. Yeah, those damn bugs. Yeah. So I'm going on the moon. We may or may not have an episode next week. If not, uh, I'm not putting out the backup episode we have because it fucking sucks. So <laughs> yeah, it's bad. It's bad. We tried and failed. We'll work on another one later. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. On that note, it's time to shill. And as the king of shilling, go to twitch.tv forward slash Satohara. Hit follow. We're trying to get Xander all the way up to affiliate. And once he's affiliate, Xander can start making them yeah. big boy bucks off of uh, Supple yeah. Hefe. Go to twitch.tv forward slash Devon Varvio. Hit follow and hit subscribe if you want to financially support the boy. Also, go follow both of them on Twitter uh, at Devon Varvio and at Satohara. Is it 13173? Satohara3173 If you want to commission either of my boys to do stuff for you Get them some money and they'll do things I, for you I don't you. take commissions <laughs> <things. laughs> I don't take commissions, don't commission me <laughs> Okay, well don't commission him But commission commission my boy Devon To go make you some fun voice stuff Or commission also go to, Or commission his wife Also go to youtube.com So technical cake mix, hit subscribe And watch some stuff, I promise it's good November video is en route As well as the Christmas special As always is en route um, Bye. Yeah. Bye. In a world where worlds were ruling, one world would world before worlds. This is the world, starring Tom Cruise, Winter 2023.